first at four, breaking news about bad weather. The National Weather Service just confirmed a tornado did touch it touched down in Fenton. We have new information, Andrew. And that new information coming shortly. The newest information on shower activity. We have some scattered light showers to our north. Nothing as heavy as last night, but the risk for more rain tonight or later this week. Your seven day forecast minutes away. First at four. Plus, the heated battle inside the Trump White House. The first testimony from former insider describes a battle over bogus election claims. It's all next, first at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Pamela Osborne. The breaking news concerns this storm damage over Fenton. Late this afternoon, the National Weather Service confirmed a tornado touched down last night. Officials say the tornado hit the ground at 11.33 p.m. and moved along the shoreline of Lake Fenton and kept moving east-southeast for more than seven miles. It lifted, it lifted back off the ground just nine minutes later. Large tree limbs fell onto a home on Pine Street. The damage also reached into Holly. Luckily, we do not have any reports of injuries. And Warren police searching for. Thank you very much, Pamela. We are looking at more information on that tornado. Here's basically a graphic and a map showing you Lake Fenton right here and where that's where the tornado touched down, as Pamela just mentioned, traveling at a great distance, uh, seven and a half miles basically toward I-75, doing some of that damage that you just saw, saw a moment ago. Here are some other stats on that tornado itself. In addition to traveling seven and a half miles, its peak winds were at 65 miles per hour, making it an EF zero tornado, weakest on the scale, but even the weakest tornadoes can still be very dangerous. So that's why it was important to take cover last night. A 40 yard wide uh, path that was seven and a half miles in that area. Let's take a look at Storm Tracker 4 right now. We have some showers to our north. Nothing really much to write home about. A few areas of light to moderate rain falling. Here's one heavier shower here just to the north of KPAC that is traveling to the east southeast. So Brockway and Yale, you might see a heavy downpour within the next five to 10 minutes. So we'll keep those scattered showers north of the city, city of Detroit, mainly along the I-69 corridor as temperatures dip from the low 80s into the 70s later this evening and for the early part of tonight. We'll talk more about another chance for rain tomorrow coming up. Andrew, thank you. Warren police searching for a hit and run driver that killed a man who was riding a bike tying up traffic on 13 miles for hours. The emergency call started coming in around 5 a.m. Police say a 47 year old man was riding his bike eastbound on 13 mile when he was hit from behind. Investigators are looking for a black Dodge Ram that would be missing its front grill, the entire grill. 13 mile was closed in both directions from mound to near Ryan. Well, doctors at Henry Ford say Metro Detroit is in the early stages of another COVID surge. Hospitalizations in Wayne, Oakland and Macomb counties are up 13% in the last week and case rates are climbing. New numbers from the state show 16,681 new cases over the last seven days. That's an average of nearly 2,400 cases per day. We lost another 116 lives. The increase in cases is being driven by the BA5 variant of Omicron. Doctors say it produces cold like symptoms with fevers and aches, but it may also cause more lung disease than other variants. BA5 does have the ability to escape some of our immune protection after natural infection. And there have been reports that it's very possible to get infected with BA5 as soon as four weeks with a previous COVID infection. Along those lines, we also need know that the antibodies or protective protein levels we need from vaccine have to be higher, which is so important for adults to get their booster shots. Dr. Cunningham says pediatric hospitaliz hospitalizations from this variant are also up. He says we're at a point where people should seriously consider wearing masks indoors. The January 6th committee just wrapped up its latest public hearing a short time ago. Today it unveiled a new star witness and focused on former President Trump's refusal to admit defeat in the 2020 presidential election. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom and Kim, a big part of today's hearing focused on a specific meeting at the White House. Tell us about it. It did and good afternoon to you, Pam. The committee spent quite a bit of time focusing on a showdown in the White House on December 18th of 2020. The meeting described as very heated featured Trump allies like Sidney Powell and Michael Flynn talking up unproven theories of election fraud. 
On the other side, White House attorneys like Pat Cipollone kept asking, where's the evidence, leading to recollections like this. Yeah, the three of them were really sort of forcefully attacking me verbally. I mean, if, if it had been me sitting in his chair, I would have fired all of them that night and had them escorted out of the building. What do you mean, where's the evidence? You should know, you know, and things like that, or, you know, a disregard, I would say, a general disregard for the importance of actually backing up what you say with the facts. The meeting is being described as a battle to convince Trump it was time to concede the election. Instead, hours later, the president posted this tweet that ended with, quote, big protest in D.C. January 6th. Be there. It will be wild. The committee then showed how that tweet sparked right wing pundits to pick up the call to the pro to protest in Washington. Committee co-chair Liz Cheney says Trump defenders are arguing Trump was misled by the wrong advisors, but she says that won't work. The strategy is to blame people his advisors called, quote, the crazies for what Donald Trump did. This, of course, is nonsense. President Trump is a 76-year-old man. He is not an impressionable child. Just like everyone else in our country, he is responsible for his own actions and his own choices. Today's hearing started at 1 p.m. and wrapped up just before 4 o'clock, just before this newscast. There's much more testimony to sort through, though, and we'll have a report from Washington when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, Pam, we'll send it back to you. All right, Kimberly, thank you sure. so much. The First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, is apologizing for the language she used while speaking to a Latino civil rights group while applauding Latino diversity. She said the community is, quote, as distinct as the bodegas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio. The National Association of Hispanic Journalists was among those who was offended, tweeting, quote, we are not tacos. Today, a spokesman says for the First Lady, she apologizes that her words conveyed anything but pure admiration and love for the Latino community. Giving mothers and babies a more successful outcome, that's the mission of the Black Mothers Breastfeeding Association. In the middle of a baby formula shortage, its work is even more important as many local moms already face some daunting odds. You probably didn't realize mothers in Detroit are dying at a rate three times the national average. Those odds even worse for black mothers who are more likely to die when compared to white mothers. There is encouraging news as Johnson & Johnson has noticed the work the association is doing and it's offering tens of thousands of dollars in support. We can't focus on babies without focusing on mama. That focus is Kadada Green's life's work. This is the community she's created for expectant and new mothers in Detroit through her organization, the Black Mothers Breastfeeding Association. The black mothers are literally dying after t from pregnancy related um, trauma and at a rate of four times more than white women. And so it's very important that we build that community of support and that we work to um, change the system because many of these deaths are preventable. And so we we believe that it happens in the community. With odds like that, the group has expanded its services so that moms and babies can live healthier, happier lives. Right now during COVID, I see it's a little bit harder. Robina Hill went from a participant in one of the group's breastfeeding clubs to one of its trained doulas. In the four years since, she's worked to educate, encourage, and support mothers like Tiana Rogers. So it's more empowering because they have so much information for you. For Rogers, it can be hard to get out of the house with a new baby and two older children at home. That's where the app and Johnson & Johnson come in. We entered the challenge. We focused on one of our programs called the Ben for Bright Hub, which is the virtual community for parent clubs. It's a platform, it's an app. The Bright Hub app is a platform that brings parent groups and support to mom, wherever she may be. They reach out to you even when you know you're not willing to reach out to them. You have resources, you have a sisterhood, you have people who you can identify with, you have people who you can bounce questions off of. 
J&J &J was looking for organizations working to reduce health disparities in black and brown communities. They found what they were looking for in Green's organization and app. The $75,000 prize will support the expansion of the app. Green also hopes to expand the doula program so that more black mothers can experience this. So it brings me a lot of joy just knowing that the, um, we can change the birth outcomes and we can change the breastfeeding rates as well. Since 2007, the Black Mothers Breastfeeding Association has served over 2,000 families through their doula and breastfeeding support groups. They've reached even more people than that because they've collaborated with the CDC and the State Department of Health and Human Services. Whether you're a first-time mom, a mom looking to relactate, or you're just in need of some support, you can find it all there with them.